shame attacks kids from such a young age, yeah. Like oh, yeah. much earlier than we would think so. And we've seen this navigating things, particularly with our older kids. And so we need to disarm the voice of the accuser with our children. Great to have yeah, you. Yeah, so who's back. back? Yeah, we missed you. I missed being with you guys. I, I may have submitted you. a comment. Where's Lisa? I Why? had to make up a fake <laughs> email. Not part of the family yeah. anymore. Burning question. What Where's Lisa? <laughs> Lisa is writing. Can she make it right? <laughs> All right. Well, we do have a burning question, and Julie, yes. this one's for you. All, All right. right. How? This is what they're asking. How? How can we keep quality time? as a couple with a tight schedule, that's mm. the first challenge, and young children who needs us. This is coming from Stephanie. And Stephanie, I'm not going to even try to pronounce your last name, but it starts with an S. A it lot of with e. an S. It is. As much as ours. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great question. Well, I know Addison and I, when I was pregnant with our first Asher, we were really attracted to a baby book. And one of the first chapters was about maintaining the relationship between mom and dad, husband and wife, mm -hmm. first and foremost. So for us, we built it in from the very beginning and we yeah. did that through an early bedtime. I was going to say, you guys were amazing. You're like, and our children are in bed. I'm like, it's four. <laughs> <laughs> it's four. <laughs> I'm like, how did you do that? <laughs> I think we we put our kids to bed at 10. We still do. Yeah. That. <laughs> no. They're asleep they come right off now. Of school <laughs> and they're like, good night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How did you do that? Well, we sleep trained them um, and they had temperaments that, I don't know, Asher sleep training is its own <laughs> thing. No, actually, all great. four of them. Oh, eventually. Did. Wait a minute. I remember the Eventually. She would screech bloody <laughs> at <murder>. times. <laughs> But she eventually gave in. She did. I just, I still remember like when we'd be doing like a family night and Sophia would be in, oh my in the basement, in the basement screaming. Yeah. And then she would throw everything out. The passy would go out. The blank That's would right. go out. It would all be she, on the ground. It would all be gone. That's and you're right. like, do we go in? Do we rescue? I remember I babysat her one truth. time and I was so not used oh to that. Gosh. That I had to set yeah. the timer. Yeah. Because yeah. 10 minutes felt like an hour and a yeah, half. It's it true. really does. It, does. it really does. All right. So we did. We, she put them down. <laughs> she was. Y'all, your, your relationship is better exactly. because you stayed strong. We I put our kids I down. At least came like, in and put the stuff back in yeah. and ran. Yeah. <laughs> and that would be our time. Yeah. Honestly, now we find ourselves where our kids, specifically our older kids, are in a different stage and their sleep rhythms mm -hmm. are changing. And we are having to reevaluate how to be intentional about that evening time. So yeah. season by season. So if you didn't evaluate or if you didn't establish that from infancy, I think it will be harder, but you establish this is mom and dad's time. So even when Ad comes home from a trip and he's with them and then we're like, okay, we need our own time separate from you and that's okay. So first you have to believe that it's okay for you to have time with mm -hmm. your spouse. And I like that Stephanie said in a, with a tight schedule, schedule it in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like if you have a tight schedule, Great. you need to make that a part of your tight schedule. Yeah. I was talking to a military mom. She had like eight kids and she told me every single day, her husband and her for 50 minutes, right when One he got five home. One five or five zero? Five zero. Wow. Right when he got home, they had what they called couch time and no other child, like no children were allowed to interrupt. And even when he was traveling, it was on the phone at that exact same time. Hmm. So their, their family rhythm was very regimented. Is an admiral. Military. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Military. But she said, like, we established this and it's good for our kids to know this is prioritized in our home. It is with you in our home. It'll be prioritized after you're gone. Like, and there's a, yeah. such a safety that yeah. kids find in yeah. knowing that yeah. their parents value their relationship. Yeah. And, you know, I want to say it doesn't, I love that you're saying it, you don't have to leave. Yeah. Like, I mean, I get date night and date night is wonderful if that actually is something that happens on a regular basis. We love the theory of date night, but we rarely did date night. <laughs> so you could even just go for a walk and your kids can Walks stay in are the house. Wonderful. Yes, yes, absolutely. And then, what if they are like, "Uh oh, we didn't start this pattern." They can sit down with their kids and say, "We realize mm -hmm. that we have not made our relationship a priority." Yeah. And 
we need to do that for your sake. Yeah. Yeah. And do both. Yeah. Do something daily. Also do date night. But if you don't do the daily consistent, you're desperate for date night and then you just fight the whole date. <laughs> so, <laughs> or, or you or you go or you go to a movie and you're just sitting there. And what is that? You're like, like no, quality no. Time. Yeah. no, and trips. Now, this is certainly the next level of like luxurious, but we have found at least once a year making it a priority to get away for at least 48 hours. And I know people will be like, that's just not possible. Find another couple who needs that mm -hmm. too and have their kids over to your house. They can even do a staycation at their home and then swap. I love like, that. If you prioritize it, you find a way to make it yeah. happen. But it it resets our relationship, our values, our vision for the year ahead like nothing else to just be the two of us. And we did establish that from the beginning. When our infants turned one month old, we went away for 24 hours, which we, did. we tell to new moms. I remember that. I got to watch them. <laughs> I, I we tell that. new moms and they're like, what? I'm like, you pump, you pump while you're there, you pump before. Yeah, I remember Asher, I, I had I had him like in my bed taking pictures of him. People are like, you better not be sleeping with that baby. I'm like, oh, no, I'm just <laughs> cuddling with him. Stop I'm so glad your social media followers keep you accountable. <laughs> <laughs> they they are just they they are, you know, that's who they are. They're my they're my accountability. Well, I love that you've highlighted relationships mm -hmm. and the priority of relationships. And I'm super excited about this podcast and what we're going to be talking about. And so yes. I'm going to throw this to Mr. Addison. We have well, something. Well, no, we should announce it. Well, okay. You want to do it? This yeah. is a you big announcement. You haven't spoken. Tomorrow is the launch of Addison's second book, which is called Words with God. Addison, yes. would you tell us about this exciting book? Yeah, wow. Like just like that. Segway. The... Segway is an Italian word and I'm embracing it. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. yeah. So tomorrow, so this episode comes out April 17th. So April 18th, 2023. Words with God, trading, boring, empty prayer for real connection comes out. And I yeah. worked on this book for two plus years. I know and, the editor wow. was afraid she was just gonna have to take it from you. She, <laughs> she was. Yeah. Yeah. We had some of those conversations. Um, but it's it's the dual meaning. And I mean, it's fitting that I had to wrestle with the book. It's mm. the dual meaning of how do we have words with God? Like, how do we pray? But also, how do we have words with God? Like, how do we go there with God in those moments of doubt and those moments of silence and those moments of perceived isolation? How do we journey through those and into the promise of connection and intimacy and communion? And I think of what Paul says at the end of 2 Corinthians, when he says, may the communion of the Spirit be with you always. Like This is the inheritance of what it is to be the people of God. Yeah. But if we're honest, prayer so often feels like we're just yelling into a canyon. And or a duty. Or a duty. And yeah. maybe, maybe there's some sound returning back to us, but is that actually another voice or is that just an echo? of our own voice. Mm -hmm. And I've heard from so many people like they want to have words with God, but it seems like God doesn't want to have words with them. Yeah. I uh, had a friend who told me, he said, look, God's the only person who can get away with expecting you to show up for a conversation daily that he refuses to show up for. But do you think that's accurate? But just sit with that. <laughs> I, like okay, before with, like before I'll we <laughs> before we like get into defend mode and all that kind of stuff i mean just like let's be yeah. honest we want to have words with god right yeah. we, we want to we hear were from made, him. Yeah. we were Absolutely. made for intimacy with him and, and so what are what are the things that keep us from enjoying that life what are the things that keep us from trading boring empty prayer where it's just, I'm showing up for this thing, but God's not showing up mm. for real connection that extends outside of the prayer closet into our everyday lives. If you look at what Paul says in places like Romans 12 and 1 Thessalonians 5, he's, he invites us into this prayer that is without ceasing, mm. that, that doesn't end. Yeah. Well, if we have this transactional and singular view of prayer, that doesn't work. Like that doesn't fit with real life. And I I, I mean, I, we can't, we can't, I mean, this is a whole book and I, and I want to be like, I want to be specific to our audience, um, at home audience. But I think one of the reasons why people struggle to hear the voice of God 
and connect with God through prayer is because they look for God's voice in the voice of the accuser. Hmm. They expect mm, that's they really expect good. God to sound like the voice of the accuser. And if you think about, we're talking about formation. When you think about the son, the beloved son, yeah. you have the moment of baptism yeah. and he goes into the wilderness. He's led by the spirit into the wilderness. And what's the first thing that the accuser says to him? If, 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 if you're really son of God, son of God, do something practical, yeah. make some bread, yeah. do something spectacular. Do something miraculous. Mm -hmm. And there's this voice of proving, of proving, of mm. accusation that mm -hmm. comes after us. And that's why the first part of the book, the book's in three parts. The first part is called The Canyon. Because like my premise of the first part is God brings us into the canyon, which is this place of silence. But that, that's where we actually learn that silence has a language. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like 1 Kings 19 when Elijah flees and he finds himself in this place yeah. where he is distraught. He is questioning his calling. He is questioning his connection with God. Like everything seems to have gone wrong. He's saying, it's better for me if I'm dead. Right. And then there's the earthquake and there's the whirlwind and there's the fire and the voice isn't there. But then the voice comes in thin silence. It's literally how it reads in Hebrew. In thin silence, the mm -hmm. voice comes. And he has a reckoning with God in that moment. He also has a reckoning with why God created him and what he needs to do going forward. And so the canyon is that place. It's that part of the journey of engaging with God where we unlearn the voice of the accuser so we can start to hear the way God speaks to us. Otherwise, we look for God's voice in a way that honestly, we weren't created to know and enjoy yeah. communion with God. And it's so much more than just words. It's about union. Like we were created for a union with yeah. God that goes beyond words. And I, and I want to cast this vision of what it is to not just be people who pray, but be praying people mm. to live in no, such wait, a way. Wait. I want you to highlight that one more time. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Not just to people who, who pray, pray, but be praying, praying people. people. Can you distinguish what you yeah. mean by that? Yeah. So prayer for so many is transactional. It's this, it's this moment where you go into your closet, you do your thing, or you go on a walk and you do your thing, you pray in the shower or whatever it is. And I was blessed with two very different praying parents, right? So I, I praying saw- the car, <laughs> Praying the kids. I, I, had, I, had, I had some great examples, but, but I, believe, I believe that the invitation is for us to live with a God consciousness, mm -hmm. with an awareness of how God is moving in our lives that extends beyond the prayer closet. In the book, I talk about quality time versus conscious time in prayer. And we were talking about quality time between a husband and a wife yeah. and how that's foundational for the family. Well, I described quality time with God as that time when we steal away. If you look at Jesus, the son who lived in perfect union with the father, he would steal away. It talks yeah. about how he stole away the night before he chose the 12. He stole away and prayed the entire night. Was he just moving his mouth that entire time? No, he was in union with the Father. Yes, he, there were words. Yes, there was connection. But there was listening. But he, there was a lot of listening. Yeah. And, and we don't journey into the silence often enough in the busyness and the chaos mm -hmm. of our day. And so we haven't learned how to listen to the voice that is the still small voice, the voice that comes in the thin silence. So we have those times. Those are very significant and important. But then we also have something that's called conscious time. And conscious time is when we take what we receive in the quality time and we move it into our everyday lives and we're aware of what God is doing. I liken it to a relationship. Mm -hmm. You, as a spouse, like you need to have quality time, but you also need to have conscious time. Mm -hmm. You need to be thinking about each other. You need to be texting each other. You need to be inviting each other into the details of the day, the spontaneity of the day. And that's where deeply formed prayers are found in that connection between the two, the relationship between the two. And you see Jesus, like in John 5, he says, I only do what I see the Father doing. Yeah, He lived so in tune yeah. with what God was doing. And he tells us in John 16, it's better for you that I go away. Yeah. Because when I go away, the Spirit will come, the integrator, and the integrator will bring all this together. What feels external, what feels removed, what feels at arm's length will become a part of who you are. It will transform your very being. That's why he breathed on him. He said, receive the Spirit. As you receive this life, you're going to be able yeah. to breathe out 
about the reality of the kingdom and what that means. And in that specific moment, it was about forgiveness and releasing people into freedom. And so my, my passion is for, for us to realize the way God wants to have words with us. And it's so much more than just even what we think of words or conversation. It moves into every part of our lives and our relationships. You know, so. as you're talking, Addison, I think about how Abraham and Moses both had words with God. Mm -hmm. Where yeah. they were like, wait a minute, do you want the Egyptians to say you brought us out here to kill us? And then Abraham's like, well, what about 50 people? Okay, what about five less? Mm -hmm. What about five less mm -hmm. than that? I mean, they actually had this interaction with God. Yeah. And and I love that you you talk about that voice of the accuser, because I still remember when you were a baby, I cried out to God and I said, I want to know your voice. I'm so tired of everybody saying God says. Yeah. And I can read and and have the scripture, scriptures highlighted and I could have a song and it touches me, but yeah. I don't know that I know yeah. your voice. Yeah. And I remember the very first moment that I sat down with a journal, my body posture mm. was like, I'm getting ready to get slapped. I was like, He's going to talk to me, and he's going to tell me I don't pray enough. He's going to tell me I don't read my Bible enough. Yeah. He's going to tell me I, I'm not this enough and this enough. Yeah. And that is not yeah. the tone of the voice no. that he brought. It, it When I finally heard him, he said, this so, is not a duty. He said, I want to speak to you more than you want to hear from me. So the, the, you just affirmed Addison's vo uh, yeah. what he said. Absolutely. We've got to lose. The voice of the accuser. We've got to lose the expectancy of being accused, mm -hmm. right? Am well, I saying I mean, that right? And, and, well, and you know this. I mean, so much, so much of the book of Hebrews in particular is about this idea of us finding the confidence and the assurance in the life and the work of Jesus to approach God mm -hmm. with boldness, the yeah. presence mm -hmm. of God with mm -hmm. boldness, not allowing accusation to keep us from finding the mercy and the grace that we need yeah. in, in our in our desperation and our plight. And I love how the writer of Hebrews in particular brings out the idea that Jesus has been tempted the way we're tempted. He's been tempted to believe. Here's the great, like great temptation. Yeah. He's been tempted to believe the lie of separation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's been tempted yeah, to believe like he had yeah. on the cross when yeah. he when he quoted Psalm yep. 22. Yep. My God, my God, yep. why have you forsaken me? Mm -hmm. You know, later in that psalm, because you got to remember when Jesus yep. is saying that, there's a whole psalm, there's a whole yep. movement, yep. prophetic messianic movement to that psalm. Later in the psalm, the psalmist clearly states that God does not abandon the afflicted in their affliction. Mm -hmm. But the son who lived in perfect union with the Father, in order to become like us, he had to pass through the temptation, the belief that he was separated from the Father. Hmm. And that psalm goes on to declare yep. Yep. the providence and the reach and the goodness and the faithfulness and the kingdom of God and how that will stretch and reach into all the peoples and all the nation. And so for us as sons and daughters, we have got to learn that the voice of shame, and I see this with kids, y'all, Shame attacks kids from such a young age, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. much earlier than we would think so. And we've seen this navigating things, particularly with our older kids. And so we need to disarm the voice of the accuser with our children. We need to make it very clear to our children from a young age, the difference between the voice of God, which leads us into hope, which leads us into promise, which leads us into power and providence and goodness versus the voice of the accuser, which causes us to shrink back. I love what the he writer of Hebrews mm -hmm. 10 and, and Hebrews 10 says, we are not those who shrink back yeah. right. and are destroyed. We are those who persevere yeah. into the promise of God's goodness and his faithfulness, something that awakens in us as we perceive him and who yeah. he is by faith and hope and love. Like this is what it is to be the people of God. And I think we don't have a robust prayer life because we haven't been taught. Like that's the place where we do business with God, where we wrestle with God. And it's okay. Even looking at the Psalms, you see oh, David, the way totally. yes. they would cry out and you would see, it almost would seem like they're talking out of both sides of yeah. their mouth. Like yeah. is God faithful or has he abandoned them? Yeah. Which one yeah. is it? Yeah. And if you look at the identity of what it is to be a Hebrew, this is actually fascinating. I don't know if I've ever shared this with you before, but this you'll 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 like this in particular. Get ready. <laughs> what it is to be a Hebrew is literally like what it means is a crossover. -er, okay, like a crossover. -er. So when they left Egypt, Egypt, they were a mixed multitude. 
Wow. But when they crossed over, mm. they became Hebrews. Wow, that's beautiful. That's interesting. Okay. When they crossed, they were a mixed multitude. Are you talking about the Red Sea or are you talking about the Correct. River Jordan? Correct. No, Red Sea. They became a they went from a mixed multitude to the people who had crossed over. Mm. Wow. That became their identity. So that's one one part of our identity is the people of God, right? What it means to be a part right. of Abraham's family. We cross over. Mm. And the second part is we wrestle with God. Mm. Mm-hmm. So we are people who cross over, and we see that in the moment, mm-hmm. with, right? Yeah. With Jacob wrestling with God and then receiving the new name, receiving the name of Israel. We are people who cross over, and we are people who wrestle with God. We have words with God. And that that is a part of our formation, mm-hmm. and that reaches into every part of our lives. And something that I touch on so much in the book is how we've split. I call it the split. We've separated so much of our lives as far as where God can do business with us, Hmm. where God can speak to us, where God um, reveals his purpose and his heart and his goodness through us and in us. Mm -hmm. We participate in that split instead of being people of prayer and merging the worlds, bringing it together, which was the call and the vocation of Jesus continued through the people who are following him and um, learning his ways. And so... Yeah, I just, I love that idea that we're crossoverers and we wrestle with God. And we do that, we do that through prayer. So, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm a bit riveted by the comment your friend made. Uh, God's the only one that you can have an appointment with who you know, doesn't show up. You knew that up. was going <laughs> to rivet your dad. <laughs> um, I'm thinking about Jesus, who in the days of his flesh yeah. offered vehement cries. Yeah. To the one who is able to save him there is if we have to look at jesus as an example a time when maybe we don't feel we don't perceive like yeah. don't perceive yeah. that god is hearing us that yeah. moment. Mm-hmm. but we know in our heart he is mm-hmm. why does it come to that point of vehement it cries i think i have learned that god wants god loves when we are desperately wanting something, Mm -hmm. not casually wanting something, but desperately wanting something. Mm -hmm. So I'm reading this morning and Mm -hmm. I'm reading Exodus and God just says to Moses, you're the deliverer. I show these signs to these guys of how I'm going to deliver them. I'm going to bring them out. Moses goes in and does exactly what God tells him to do with Pharaoh and Pharaoh increases their hardship, Mm. increases it to the point now that the Hebrew taskmaster or the Hebrew uh, managers are getting whipped because they're not making enough bricks because they're now having to get their own straw. And they come out and they look at him and said, you, God, may God judge you for what you've done. Here's Moses going, God, I I did exactly what you told me to do. I've just increased the hardship of these people. Now they don't get straw anymore. They got to make the same amount of bricks. Mm -hmm. They're all cursing me now. And they're saying that you're going to judge me. There's a wrestling there. And God God had full intention of delivering them. And it was all a process of Pharaoh's heart being hardened so God could display his power. And what goes through my mind is, because if he just immediately delivers them, now how do all the nations of the world hear of his reputation? They don't. They don't. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 um, oh gosh, the Philistines were talking about hundreds of years later. Yeah. This is God who delivered Israel out of Egypt and destroyed the most powerful yeah. nation of the world. Yeah. And, you know, I, I just really believe that you're spot on with this message is so important. Yeah. But I also want to, I want to, I want to, I want everybody to hear if you find yourself crying out out of desperation. It's, Addison just said it. There's that tension, yeah. Uh, you know, you're, you're, that you you saw in the Psalms, yes. and, and it's not just a well, God, you know, I'm asking you, yeah. and casually just being quiet, and oh, yeah. I mean, 
there's a wrestling <laughs> sometimes because we live in a fallen world. Yeah. It'll, it won't be like that when we're, when we're walking the streets sure. of gold. Sure. It won't be like that. Yeah. We're in a hostile environment right now. Mm. We're in enemy territory right now. Right now, the wrestling is, is part of the intimacy. And I, and I think we'll talk about this in the next episode, but when it comes to, to praying and contending and crying out, it's the process of the prayer that prepares us to receive yeah. mm. what we're contending That's for. That's excellent. And, Very and, and well we, stated. And we have, we have to remember that because God's not just in the business of giving us yeah. what we think we need. God's, God's in the business of giving us what is highest and best, and he prepares it, and he preserves it for us. It's kind of like how he 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 said, look, I'm going to leave, when he was talking about the promise, that I'm going to leave them in there. Your enemies, yeah. I'm going to leave them in there. Otherwise, the wild animals right. will overrun. And what I prepared for you, bit. I'm going to drive them out bit by bit. What I prepared for you will be destroyed. And so even though you want this like, I, and you want them gone, you want your enemies gone, I'm going to leave them in there because I know this is actually preserving the promise that I have for you. And so my like my heart for this is like God wants... Ooh, God wants, I'm passionate, hitting the mic. God wants to have words with us. Yeah. But yes. the way God has words with us is very different than what we expect. And what I told my friend, as I said, and so going all the way back to that story, this is what I told my friend. I said, listen, you haven't learned to open the conversation. Mm. I said, you are inviting God into a single stale moment of your life that is very transactional. You're going to God for what he can do for you. And don't get me wrong. Like God Love can that. God can Love use that. an imperfect prayer Absolutely. to take us to a perfect place. Yeah. He does all the time. Yeah. Like I would rather people pray imperfectly, yes. even with the wrong heart, because God's going to do something with that. He does. But I told him, I said, you need to open up the conversation. And then that led into a whole conversation, like what it means to open up the conversation, which actually became uh, a chapter in the book called opening the conversation uh so that you know anyway full full circle but um i know we're coming to the end of our time did y'all want to share so i actually wanted to read an excerpt it's very no, short I've, yeah i want you to read I the excerpt and that and... punctuates what we what we've been saying so chapter one is called the voice and the first part of the book is the canyon the second part of the book is the temple so three parts the temple is the idea of like where we meet with god mm. and the third part of the book is called the dance and the dance is the idea of this moves into every part of our lives i love that so it's this is good. this is toward the end of chapter one it reads the gospel tells us the good news that we've largely gotten god and prayer wrong and that's why we should repent stop listening to the accuser and return to the voice the accuser has no right to dictate or deny our prayers. In fact, scripture tells us that the spirit and son constantly intercede so that we, through our prayers, would know the surety and connectedness of God's presence, a surety that takes us into and through the canyon. They intercede that we may know the voice and follow it home. And the dangerous truth is that the canyon is the pathway home. Like a child sent into the wilderness for a rite of passage, so our journey takes us into and through the silence. It's in the canyon that we wrestle with God and discover who we are and what we're capable of. It's in the canyon where empty words are exchanged for a real connection. It's in the canyon that we face off with our ideas of God, prayer, and many other things so we can surrender to the mind of Christ. It's in the canyon that we figure out that a prayer life is much more than a spiritual exercise. It's the higher consciousness that reorders and integrates life, reclaiming every bit of living and us as holy and necessary to God's purposes and design. Hmm. The canyon silence... Wow helps us join our voice, our holy amen with the voice again. For even in the canyon's echo, the voice speaks. That's so good. Wow. Okay. Well, as a mom, I'm about ready to cry. <laughs> I, um, I just want you to hear how incredibly important this book is. This is a time where God is inviting his people yeah. to draw near. This is a time where God is saying, I want to speak to you. This is a time where he wants to say, I want to dismantle every narrative, every high thing that exalted itself against yes. you knowing God. Yes. 
Not it, just it's knowing where about we connect. God. It's where yeah. we connect with God. And that's why mm-hmm. this message yeah. is so important and everybody needs to get it. I mean, you don't want to have a distant relationship with your heavenly no. father. No. And no. he wants to connect. Yeah. And this will really, I believe, help people's eyes be opened up to the fact that God desires to connect with them. And I will never forget that I was asking that question years ago that you're basically your friend asked. I didn't say it as, well, as bluntly as he did, but it was the Lord said to me, because you hope I'll show up. I said, I said, if I, if you draw near to me, I yeah. will draw near to you. Yes, yeah. <clears throat> I didn't say I might. I said yeah. I would. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that one little thing changed everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people go in hoping mm-hmm. instead of knowing. Yeah. Here's the thing. We don't write books as an organization just to produce books. We only actually believe in taking down the things that we believe are messages from heaven. Mm-hmm. And I, I yes. want to highlight that Addison spent two years writing this book. This was not a casual book, but I believe this is a timely book. I believe it's a prophetic book. I believe it is a right now message. And I, I just believe that you have such a desperate hunger to hear from God. Mm-hmm. So I just want to challenge you. You can get a hold of Words with God. It's going to launch tomorrow. You can go to Amazon. That's where the best place yes. is for you, you to get or one anywhere. Button. Yeah. And you know, it, you can come to us. If you come to us, you're going to have to put your name, you. your address, you're going to yeah. have to put your credit card. Yeah. But if you're a wherever, Prime member, wherever they you get. just hit <laughs> Hey, yeah, we'll charge uh, you for click. shipping if Co- you come. Couple to us. things. So wherever they get books, audiobook. I did Absolutely. read the audiobook. So uh, amazing ebook, and then also it comes out in Spanish. Uh, tomorrow, <gasps> adios. Too. Tomorrow, that is out. amazing. Comes out in Spanish. <laughs> wow, the Spanish version is re- releasing the same day. That's as the English. that's exciting. Yeah. Okay, yeah, the Spanish that's publisher. very unusual. So. It's very very unusual. The Spanish publisher that picked it up. Um, the editor was so impacted by it that they fast tracked it and they wanted it to come out with the English version. Wow. Okay, so. we're, we're doing double language right away, <laughs> Words with God. Can they get yeah. that on Amazon as well? I believe so. Yeah. That is so yeah. exciting. Yeah. Well, I'm super excited. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Mom. Addison, proud I know you, Addison. that you. you're a deep well, and I can hear this is a deep message. He gets up and reads the Word of God every single morning. <laughs> he has his Bible <laughs> so colored up and so highlighted. Want, and so it's, I mean, I'm looking I, at it right I, now. I want to. There's I wanna, as many <laughs> notes as there are scriptures wanna, on his pages. I want to say this, though, for, for people hearing this. Um, this message is very accessible. That's what I this, was going to say. It's, it's yes. very, it's very accessible, and I, I use a, I use the Lord's Prayer as a framework. We're going to talk about this in the next episode, but I use the Lord's Prayer as a framework. It's not a book about the Lord's Prayer, but there are very few things where Jesus told us, "Hey, like this is how you do Here's it," because path. He how yeah. He knows we have a tendency to glorify formulas mm-hmm. and then manipulate them and twist them. Um, so I just I'm I'm grateful for y'all. Thank you for the way you've supported it, all of you. Um, and I, I just believe, I believe that this is going to bring people into that place of connection with God, and it's going to teach them how to engage with the voice and how to have words with God in ways that they've always desired to connect with Him. So, so good, it's beautiful. As soon as you get it, I want a signed copy. Absolutely, <laughs> you got it. Yes, sir. Someone want to pray us out, Mom? You want to pray us out? Okay, um, Heavenly Father, I just thank you. I thank you that you're stirring hearts. I thank you that you are speaking to people. I thank you that the veil of shame, Mm. the veil of condemnation, the veil of accusation is removed and that people have ears to hear what you are depositing in their heart. Father, we just thank you that you are a God who speaks Mm. and that you want your children to know your voice. And so we thank you that you are revealing yourself in your word and to your children in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us again at Home with the Beveers, where we are so passionate about helping you create a legacy starting at home. If you haven't already, go right ahead and like and subscribe. And guys, as well, leave us a comment below, because whenever you leave a comment, it helps us curate content that can help so many other people. Again, guys, thank you so much for joining, and we'll see you next time at Home with the Bevere's. <laughs>